So you will often hear landscape and nature photographers saying that failing to plan is planning to fail. Now whilst I agree with that to some extent, I also disagree with it as well. Now, Planning and preparation is fantastic, but it can often leave you sat at home waiting for the right conditions to come, um, waiting for the snow to fall, waiting for the autumn, waiting for the spring. All these things can delay you actually getting out and taking images. So what I like to do on a frequent basis is to grab a full bag of kit, which I've got behind me, and just go for a walk in a local wood. Now, I have no agenda, I have no idea what I'm going to shoot, but I'm going to put all the images, if I get any, on at the end. It's all about frequency, it's about getting out and getting to know your equipment, so that when that special time does come, you know exactly what to do, when you need to do it. So it just goes to show, images are everywhere if you're prepared to look. I've literally walked about 80 yards from my car. If you look there you can just about see it through the gap in the trees and I'm about 10 feet into the woods and I've come across this beautiful old um, horse chestnut tree and what I've discovered is that the leaves when you get into the wood are backlit with the, uh, with the overcast bright sky that's coming through them and when you get up close you can see all the structure of the leaf and they make for an absolutely beautiful abstract view and because today is all about practicing setting the camera up it's making me work hard to get a sharp image there's a little bit of wind as you can see at this moment in time the leaf's actually touching the lens so it's moving backwards and forwards all the time so it's all about practicing with your equipment and getting to know it um, I've just taken the shot just literally then as uh, I managed to grab it and to get it to, to arrest any movement um, I've got the ISO to 2500 and I've put it on F8 now I've, I've chosen F8 because it, there's a little bit of curvature to the leaf and once it's, once it's in the plane of focus I've got to make sure that those edges are sharp now currently I'm on a shutter speed of 30 for a second now that's not a lot granted but the tree is only blowing very very slightly albeit it's moving a lot through, through the distance that it's moving it's actually only moving very very slowly now I've got the camera set to AI servo which tracks the leaf as it's shifting backwards and forwards so I just waited for a slight gap in the breeze and grabbed the shot and that really is quite a nice image really pleased with that as a start so let's go and find something else So I was just walking through the middle of the wood and decided to come and have a look at this this old um, stone leg that's holding the bridge up and knowing that it's a wet environment you're going to get mosses, liverworts, um, different types of ferns, spleenworts, things like that and we've had a bit of rain in the last few hours and I'm just looking at these feather mosses here and they're all holding a bit of water and I have no idea what they'll look like through the camera but I've just taken the bag off and it's definitely worth having a quick look through the lens to see how it looks. And now, in spite of searching and searching, it just doesn't seem to be what I'm looking for in terms of composition and form. Um, there's lots of delicate fronds and you know, lots of detail, but I just can't seem to get an image that feels right, that sits and holds together nicely. So I'm going to move on. So I was just walking through the wood and I was drawn to the Scots pine trees behind me and when I got in amongst them this downy birch really caught my eye, it's what the camera's set up on now. Now like all birch trees um, the bark pattern can be really varied and really attractive, you can get coppers, 
silvers, whites, all sorts of shades. Um, the bark can be peeling, really, really attractive tree and you often see it featured in landscape photographs. Now, similarly to the horse chestnut leaf, this is an abstract again, I've got the 100 mil macro one. But what's taken my eye in this instance is that the tree's got these white horizontal lines running through the image as I've set it up. And I've positioned the camera at a crucial distance that I've just got the right amount in, not too many, not too few. And I've set the lines just so they're on a nice diagonal and I've exaggerated that slightly or I can exaggerate slightly by just moving the camera. And it makes for a really pleasing shot and um, it wouldn't look out of place on any wall and it's one of those images that you wouldn't get bored of looking at. Now in terms of settings, like I say, I've got the 100mm macro on, I've got 100 ISO, um, nice, sharp, beautiful, crisp image that will give me um, because obviously the tree's not moving. I've selected F13 and um, just to give me enough depth of field to allow for the slight um, irregularities in the in the front of the tree there, the shape, and that's given me a two second exposure. I'm on manual, full manual, because of what I wanted to do was make sure that these white lines don't go overexposed. That's critical on this shot. So I've just exposed for the highlights. Um, being careful that the dark parts of the image don't go too dark. So yeah, a really, really nice, pleasing shot. All that leaves to do is just take the shot and we're done. So a two second timer, mirror lock up. Yeah, a really nice shot. So let's see what else we can find. Now for any woodland photographers that are chomping at the bit for autumn to start, well if there's ever a sure sign that it was on its way, this is it. We're only in early August and yet the fungus is starting to sprout. Um, obviously it's been a particularly dry year and any signs of, uh, of moisture now and they're going to start coming up. Ordinarily this would have made a fantastic subject. This is um, oyster fungus, it's actually edible. Um, but unfortunately the slugs have got to it and one or two people seem to have kicked it on the way past so I'm going to leave it alone and try and find something else. Now I have always got my eye open for a new shot but in this instance I've been here before. My last video, Woodland Photography, I took some images or an image of um, water horse tails which are in front of me right here. But since I was here last, they've grown up and they're now adult plants. Unfortunately for me, someone's squashed down all the ones in the near foreground. And what that's left is this group at the back, which is standing nice and tall and proud. Now, to me, that looks like a prehistoric forest. And I have no idea what it'll look like until I get the camera set up. But from here, I'm sure there's a nice image to be had. Yeah, that looks really nice. Now, I can't deny... I've had to doctor the image ever so slightly. It's not something that I'm fond of, but it's going to save me a bit of time in Lightroom or Photoshop later on. The older tree that's growing above it, um, uh, the, the, one or two of the leaves had fallen down. They were trapped in the branches of the, the horsetail. And when I stopped the lens down um, to get enough depth of field, you could see them as distractions in the background. So I've been with a stick and I've just sort of knocked them off and got rid of them. So it's a nice, now clean composition. I've gone for a horizontal format, um, which sort of jars a little bit with the, with, the, with the way that the branches are growing up, but I think that's counteracted by the branches that's growing out sideways. Um, I'm on F14, I've got um, 160 ISO and a five second exposure, and that's just enough to risk um, between the occasional bit of wind that I keep getting. Um, but yeah, all in all, quite a nice shot to end the evening. It's um, quarter to eight now, so it's getting quite late. So I'm going to grab this, and I think I'm going to start heading back to the car. And um, I doubt I'll find anything else between here and there, but who knows? But this could be my last shot. But three shots in an evening isn't bad going, considering it was just just to come out and just a look see to see if I can get anything at all, just to practice with the camera. So all in all, yeah, quite pleased. So there we go, two second timer and wait for the image. Yeah, very happy with it. Well, 
well I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to leave it there I did think about trying to get a fourth but I think I'm pushing it the lights almost gone um, getting quite late I need to get home get something to eat but on reflection not a bad couple of hours work just to show to myself that I can still use the camera I'm still fast with it um, I don't have to really think about what I'm doing and uh, when the time comes and I need to get that all important shot I'm not going to be fumbling around wondering what to do so yeah let me know what you think of the images though because whilst I consider them to be fairly average albeit they're okay um, I've been doing this a long time now and I've got high expectations of shots and I've seen a lot of the shots that I've done today before so it's nothing new in that sense but let me know what you think um, leave your comments below and um, please subscribe as always and ring the bell for notifications and I'll see you all again next time bye for now